Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is my third or fourth video on how to overwinter tropical plants. This journey started about seven months ago where I brought in a nice container of tropicals uh, and to try to overwinter it because it's pretty expensive to buy some of the tropical plants. So I thought I would give it a go. I do not have any kind of a greenhouse. I do not use grower lights. I don't do anything to control my humidity. So trying to do what most people would have which is just a regular household environment. That's kind of been my experiment over the winter. I'd like to review at this time kind of where we're at from all the propagations I did to try to save these tropical plants. In the original container, there was a mandevea, some croton, there's some leaves from the croton, and some creeping jenny. Usually about February, when we get the coldest months of the year and it's driest, my house plants usually suffer from spider mites and I did everything I could um, to try to control it in this on this very large container and it was too much so what I decided to do is to break it down and to do propagations all right I decided to zoom in to do this so I bought these three inch containers they're green which I like rather than standard black and they are very strong so these will last me for years and years so that's why I got them I keep everything I buy at nurseries when I buy plants as well, but I wanted something that was a little bit uh, stronger because those nursery plants tend to break down and crack after a year or so in the sun. So we're going to start with these. If anybody's interested, I'll link them in the description. So I'm going to use standard potting soil to, to pot these up. Again, I'm trying to get the hard roots. I'm going to try to get standard roots to go and get these plants ready to go out into the real world, meaning outdoors. And to do that, um, I want to get them started indoors for a, maybe a week or two here. And then I'm going to start hardening them off by putting them outside. All right, so I went and loaded up some of the soil off camera. So I'm simply going to make a, a hole with my finger. I'm going to pick these up. I mean, look at, look at how beautiful that is. That's just wonderful. In this case, you can see how big the root system is. So I am going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to add just a little bit of soil to one of these cups. I'm going to rest that down in there so it's got a little bed to rest on because the roots will continue to grow down, down and around. And I'm going to bury the stem to make sure it's got some support. And I'll add some additional soil here and there. You can kind of see how that goes. I'm going to continue doing the same thing just to get these potted up. Make sure you break up any clumps that you have. I'm going to bury it kind of deep because all the way up, all the way along that stem, it will create additional roots. This is a vining plant after all. So getting it somewhat buried in there. A little bit of soil in the bottom. There. Yeah, you can just see how that worked. It wanted to root right at the bottom. So it's kind of nice to be able to zoom in and show everybody how to do this. Sometimes it's hard to see what people are doing on camera. This will work. I'm just going to press that down gently. These roots are still pretty delicate. This has only got, this has got the idea, this has an example of where it had just some callusing. You can see that there and one little root. So it's pretty delicate. I'm just going to make a little hole for it. And this was a softwood cutting because it's green versus the hardwood cutting, which were the ones that were, um, kind of brown between semi and a hardwood cutting. Sometimes people don't know the difference. Here's another softwood cutting. So you can see the root system is not nearly as developed. So the goal for this is to learn and to make sure that next year I just take probably more of the hardwood cuttings and then I'm probably going to just do propagation into water because I just think that's simpler. Water propagation is one of the easiest things to do. When you're messing with a soil propagation or a sphagnum moss propagation, as I showed, you can have issues, a lot of issues with um, fungus gnats, which is just 
miserable. <laughs> Eventually I'll have a greenhouse and control it that way, but for right now, this is what I'm doing. So I've got a lot of cutting. So that's the water propagations. Okay, let's take a closer look at the, this is a soil propagation where I had it in there. It didn't really do much of anything. Um, there's no roots established. I'm still going to just poke them in the container. This one has a little bit of a root. This one has a little bit of a root and you can see that it was on the hardwood cutting where there was a, a stem or a, a node. So you got a root and a stem all in the same area and I'm just going to push this down in. This is going to be kind of a delicate piece. So I'm going to set it on its side against against the container and tuck it in. I'll show you. I lift it up. So I, I buried the whole stem to try to give it a, a chance. The last group I have is of course the sphagnum moss propagation, which is a high humidity which is a high humidity environment. And you can see from looking at the roots on this that, that they really liked it. I just really don't like dealing with the, the fungus gnats. So for me that's more of the issue. So what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to put a little bit of soil down below like this again. Just dumped a little bit in there. I'm going to tuck this whole thing in there. Just leave the leaves kind of up. Because the roots have already been pretty established. I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'll leave it leaning against the side. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of a uh, a lip in here to be able to let the water collect. So the next one has really good roots on it too. And I'm just going to try to a little bit more soil in here. It's kind of hard because I've got roots coming out everywhere. I try to tuck the roots down in there. Get some soil on it. Press it down in. Try to keep the stem buried. Okay, that's that one. I think I got one more. This one here. Look at look at the roots are all tangled in the peat moss. I'm sorry, the roots are all tangled in the sphagnum moss, and I'm just gonna let them stay just like that. They're all happy. They're intertwined. Put just a little bit of soil on the bottom of this. Maybe a little bit more. Now, this is root, so I'm gonna tuck that root down in there. Try to. It can be a little tricky. A little bit more soil in here. Break up any of the clumps that you have. We're going to shove all of this together. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is pot up the crotons. And so I'm just going to do this directly into soil. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to just do it anyway. So I am going to put the two leaf cuttings I had, actually I have three leaf cuttings, and I am going to tuck them straight away into the soil mix. And we're going to do it that way. I doubt this one's going to work, but I'm just going to do it. And then I have these long stems as well. But should root without rooting hormone, but I it should. So I am actually just going to stick this down in the middle of the pot. And this one down in the middle of the pot too. Add a little more soil here. The last thing I'm going to do is pot up some of this creeping jenny. And it roots pretty easily. So I'm going to take a strand here. I don't know if this is all roots on there. What I got going on? Yeah. So I'm going to take a strand like this, and I'm simply going to press it into the container because again, this is a this roots readily, and in some places this is considered evasive. Um, it must be if it grows in zone four. <laughs> Not a lot grows in zone four without. Uh, 
anything that would be considered tropical. But So here's another piece that got a little bit of roots in there. I'm just going to start kind of pushing some of this down in. And I'll find some more pieces that I can push in here. So this should grow like crazy. And I'm just trying to get it transitioned from being a, a water root, which is the white roots or white water roots, into a, a strong root system that will survive when I transfer, transfer it outside. Like I said, I've got to take and... So this one here, I'm going to have to... It's really deep and embedded. I have to pull the moss off it. I don't want that much moss in there. Break it away to get down to the roots. So this one here, you can see how heavy the root system is on this one. So I'm simply going to make a nest and I'm going to shove it in. Um, and I'm going to let a lot of that stay. And I'll come back in and pour just a little bit of soil on top. Nestle it in. This has been a real fun video to do where we kind of see the final result of the long winter propagation method, which is very, very painful to do if you don't have a greenhouse. But like I said, I wanted to provide you with an option. If you just have a standard house, you don't want to spend extra money on lighting, you don't want to spend extra money on heating uh, hot mats or any kind of a heat source to try to do anything extra. Um, and uh, anybody has containers laying around they can reuse for propagation, I think, usually. We all have some kind of plastic that really needs to be repurposed. So with this, I should be able to pot up at least maybe nine or ten containers, full containers, and set around on my deck and my porch and different areas of my yard. So if you want to see the other videos that, that were the earlier phases of this overwintering technique, I will link them below in the description. If this video is helpful, give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this content with others. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.